Wild Mobile. My, the first name means window. And then Mobile is like black and white. Black and white, yeah. Window, drum, black and white. <laughs> what a name, huh? <laughs> yeah, um, obviously I was born there, like you said, and I lived there for 10 years, close to 11 years, before we moved to Australia. So. I live uh, pretty much all my childhood there and all of my, all of my friends there. So I, I have great memories and still have those memories till this day from, from Kakuma. I remember where I used to live uh, 100%, you know, it's, it's something that's, uh, that will never, uh, I will never forget. I even put it on my, one of the chin, chin guards, I put a picture of my house, it's up here in my locker. So. It's, uh, it just reminds me, and also, you know, since we left, I think a couple of years later, they knocked down our house. So when I went back to see that our house has been knocked down, I was, I was very angry, but it's how it is, you know, people move and then things get built or different people move there. So it was tough, but it was, it was, uh, it was all we had, so we didn't know anything else. So um, I guess we made the best of it. And the, the only way we could stop thinking of it was to, to do things like to play sports or play with your friends, build things, make things. So that was pretty much our routine every day, uh, just to have fun with your friends. Because uh, as you get older now, you forget that life is also about having, having fun and enjoying it because it's, it's a gift, you know. So if you forget to enjoy it, then what's the point of... Uh, of, uh, of it, you know, so um, that's how we looked at it. We, we, we were just happy and enjoying each other's company and, and looking after each other there. Uh, it was more the conditions and also at one point there was a big war there, so that was when it was dangerous, but I think the only, the, the problems is that, okay, sometimes you don't have enough things to, 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 to be able to uh, survive as, as well as you would elsewhere you know so you have to make use of things that you have to, to survive and and I guess it's danger in terms of health um, people die from small diseases and obviously the condition is not good there so that's how uh, it's dangerous you're right about that it's a, it's like a gateway to it's a place you don't want to go but you can use to go somewhere. So, um, but unfortunately, sometimes you, you have to live there for, for a long time, which is the case for some people that I know. Uh, they've been there since the camp was established in, I think, 93 or 92. Uh, so they've lived there for 26, 20, 25 years. Uh, so um, for, for my family, it was to get away from the war in, in Sudan at the time. And then I was born there, and we lived there for a long time, for 10 or more years, uh, before we go to Australia. So um, that was, that was, Kakuma was great for us, because we, we managed to, to get out of it. Uh, but there's still people there, so we need to look back and not forget them, because they are, they are people and they deserve to, 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 to at least have good health and opportunities like everyone else. It was very special for me because, um, you know, it was, you couldn't have the balls like you have here, so you couldn't, you couldn't own a ball like, like we do here. So um, we had to really make our own balls and be creative about it. And, and that's, that made it very special because you had a connection with the ball when you make a ball, or when your friend makes a ball, or your cousin makes a ball. When you play with it, you, you have a special feeling to it because you put things into it to, to make it uh, playable. So those are really good memories and 
I think those are the best memories for me in football because it made me the person and the player that I am today. It's because of uh, my childhood and how we used to play. We used to just dribble around. So it was, it was where I got my skills and learned my, streets, my street uh, skills from. So those, I'm thankful to, to Kakuma and the way uh, and what I've gone through there because it's made me and it's made other people who they are today. It was, it was very difficult, but uh, there was ways around it we, we managed to, because when you live in a certain environment for a long time, you, you know how to, to cheat against it and how to take advantage of it before it gets too hot. So what we used to do, we used to wake up very early in the morning, around 6 o'clock, and play there until maybe 10, 11 o'clock before the sun really gets strong. And then the sun will go down around 5 o'clock, so that's when it gets cooler again. So that's when you play again. And, and in, in between those, those hours, when it's really hot, you sit under the shade with your friends and you make things. You make like cars or you make like, you know, like they do here with toys. They play around like, uh, like it's real life. So we used to make toys there and then play around like it's real life. So that's how we'll get through the day under the shade when the sun is really hot. But when the sun is cool, that's when soccer, everyone is outside. I mean, everyone is outside, you know, there's never anyone in the house around those hours. It was, <laughs> it was, uh, the real life we used to imagine was somewhere where, you know, you wouldn't, people don't die from small things, uh, you live for a long time, you don't see your friends struggling, you see everyone's happy, and basically you have everything you wish for, so that was, uh, that was the real life we used to imagine. And, and yeah, as you grow older, you start to realize, if you're in the camp, you start to realize that, okay, uh, sometime, yeah, <laughs> this is what you're facing, you know, and, and it's okay to dream. Um, but uh, some people there are very unfortunate, and that's, that, that hurts me because I think everyone in this world deserves uh, an opportunity to, to become whatever they want to become. So that, for me, is what I want to pass on to the kids. Whether that's through football or through just me being a person, I, I want to remind them that uh, there is life outside and whatever you imagine, it can become true. And it's only how you think and, and, and people who, who also motivate you and use them as an example to, to reach those uh, real life uh, things that you want. It was actually quite fun to walk there because, you know, you would walk there with your friends and it would be rivals, you know, Man United and, and Arsenal at the time it was, it was when they were dominating the Premier League. So it was always those big games we used to see. So when, uh, when we used to walk there, we used to joke around with each other and, you know, like kids do. So, um, and we all, I, I had a dream, if I get an opportunity, I want to become a football player. And luckily that dream became, became true and, and through hard work I'm going to continue to, to, to do more in football. Um, so I just hope uh, I can give back to, to the kids in the camp who, in, who are in my shoes now like I was before uh, to tell them that it's okay to dream really high because that's that's where you can you can achieve anything you want. So I hope I can be that example and also that pathway to them to make it easier for them to to see. Okay, I can make it uh, in football or in in other sports or being a doctor or being whatever they want to be. I hope I can be that example. I didn't have any shoes uh, back in that time. I did not have anything. Uh, did not have any shoes. I was I was always barefooted, and that's why it's called barefoot to boots. You know because. Uh, you know, when I went to Australia and I had that opportunity to become a football player and, and then after a while I realized that, okay, I'm getting free boots from my sponsor, uh, maybe seven to eight pairs of boots every year. And people in the camp are playing with, with nothing in just, it's not even a grass area, a grass field. It's, it's just a muddy field with rocks on it. So I realized, okay, if I ask all my teammates to, to donate all their boots, um, I can collect them and and give them to the kids uh, and also the t-shirts to for them to be able to play 
games, uh, to know the teams, you know, um, because not they don't have access to, to to these kind of things. So I, like I said before, hope I can be the pathway to to give him this access through football. We did go to school, but it's not it's not what you would call a school. It's like you go there, it's it's maybe 200 children in in one class, so it's it's hard to learn, you know and one teacher, so how it's impossible for a teacher to teach 300 or 200 kids in one class. So we usually, because I love football, so I used to, used to go there and then go the other way to play football with my friends. Uh, it was it's something called a humanitarian visa, you know, it's something you can apply for as a refugee to it's called resettlement. They can resettle you in other countries that receive refugees. and. My uncle was the sponsor of us to, to go in there, so it was a long process and we were lucky enough to, to be accepted to go somewhere where we could uh, have an opportunity uh, at doing things. Like we were talking about before, you know, you used to imagine things. Uh, and I, before we went to Australia, I used to imagine Australia being like what I had in my image. And then when I went there, the first thing I said was I want to go back to my friends, you know, uh, because it was very, for me, it was very, uh, uh, it was very organized, like you're not allowed to have as much fun as you, you do with your friends in the camp because, you know, if you're walking around with a lot of people in, in the streets, they would think you're, you're a gang, right? So, so those were, were difficult times at the start, you know, and I had to learn that, okay, uh, it's a different culture compared to where I come from. Because where we come from, when we're in a group, we feel it, it's we like to share with people. So we like to welcome people to and socialize with them. But it was different when I went to Australia. People are more reserved to themselves and to their to their groups. So that I had to learn. We had to learn as a family, of course. And and it took a while, but we eventually uh, uh, learned how the system works in Australia and and how to, yeah, how to work with the system. Yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> it was quite amazing because I, I was used to playing barefooted and, and on uneven, uneven uh, ground. So when I first played on a field where everything is even, I was like, whoa, this is amazing, you know. It's, it was unbelievable, so I didn't want to stop. I just kept playing, kept playing, kept playing. Even when training was finished, I kept playing. And I didn't want to go home, <laughs> but I had to go home, you know. So those were my first, uh, first experiences when I played in a, in a proper grass field. It was, a, it was a big transition for me because uh, growing up in the camp, it was, it was more about myself as a football player, just because we used to play maybe 20 kids and and, and you just had to keep the ball for yourself. You couldn't, it was more for the fun, you know, to put the ball through the legs. So I was more of a player, everyone in the camp is more of a player that likes to dribble with the ball, like to play with the ball and nothing else. <laughs> you know, when you don't have the ball, uh, you, you, you don't do anything. So when I went to Australia and started playing there as a team, it was something different for me. And it wasn't until I was about 16 that I started to really learn uh, the team, the team way of playing, um, because I was always good as an in individual, but I had to learn as a team. And and luckily, I had some great coaches who who guided me, uh, spent a lot of hours to, to to teach me how to play the game uh, as a team and and how to be effective for the team. And when I started doing that, I started uh, to win awards. So that was that was a. Uh, that was a very good time in Australia. I started winning uh, the Youth Player of the Year, uh, also the Male uh, Under 20 Player of the Year, and many awards in my club. So that was really good. And and then I moved to Europe. So I, hey, it's it's different. Uh, you know, you, you you learn as you move on. And now I'm trying to adapt to the European way of playing, and then and then soon make my impact in Europe. Yeah, I found a lot of different, it's more, like, like I said before, in Australia I had to learn to play as a team after a while. And then when I come to Europe, I had to learn the other way also, to play uh, 
defensive, to learn the defensive game, also offensive game and the team game. And, and that, there's a lot of things to, 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 to take in. So I think I've been in Europe now for three years or two, two and a half. And, and it's, been, uh, it's been a transition. So I am, I am learning uh, uh, every day. I'm trying to learn from my coaches and my teammates. You know, I'm, I'm listening a lot and, and hopefully uh, with hard work and I'll continue to work hard, things will go uh, the right way uh, in, a, in a couple of years. You know the big teams like uh, Sporting, Benfica, Porto, Braga, you know all these teams um, and also Ronaldo who represents a lot, um, he's a big global football star so, and he's one of my idols also. So. I knew that and I knew that Portuguese have a good league, I think one of the top five or top six in the, in the world. So it was when I had an interest here, I was like, OK, I have to go because I'm a person that likes challenges and this is a big challenge for me. So I have to, I want to take this opportunity and go there and, and learn and then also add to my games and, and hopefully make my impact in it sooner rather than later. It's, uh, it's actually quite similar in some ways because uh, what, what surprised me because I was in Denmark uh, last year and when I came here was that, okay, people are always outside, uh, especially the older men, they're sitting under the tree and, and talking. This is very common uh, in Kakuma, especially like we said before, people sit under the shade. So this, when I saw this, I was very, I felt I felt some kind of ways, I don't know how to describe it, but there's something about when people are together, you know, that's, that's really good. I, I really like that. And I see that a lot here. People are always together. So I am, I am very happy with the, with the way the culture is. And it's easy for me to fit in because I'm a person that likes to be out there and being in a group and, and socializing mm -hmm. and helping people, of course. Uh, it's, it's a good question. Um, of course, when I was playing, I was in the national team uh, and my chances were, were very high of going to Russia. Um, but, uh, and then, of course, the changes of coaches and, and then adapting differently. And of course, I've not, I've not played as, as much lately as I, as I did at the start. Uh, so that put my chances down. Uh, to or my dream or my hopes to, to go into Russia puts it down because there's no opportunity when you're not playing. So, but I, I just hope that now with the last remaining games, I can help the, the club uh, and the team, my coaches and the, my teammates achieve everything possible. And then whatever happens, happens. You know, I'm, I'm sti I still dream that I will, I will play in the national team. Uh, but for Russia, I'm not thinking of it now. I'm just thinking of helping the, the club first. And then if I help the club and my country comes calling for me, I will go. Yeah, I, you know, when I came to Australia and I was given that opportunity, I, I said, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give back to this country. And, and that's, that's still, I want to give back to Australia. And the only way I can give back to it is, is through football and, and doing good things, great things for the national team. So that is one of my dreams and, and I must not forget that in order to make that dream come true, uh, I must work hard every day, that's the first thing, and, and remain humble uh, and when things go the way I plan, remain humble and, and give, give back through my performances for the country when I'm called up. Um, so the way the, the foundation started was I wanted to go back uh, to the camp with my older brother um, after some years to go visit. It was one of my off-season uh, breaks, so we decided to take some, some shirts and just to give back to the local and some football uh, balls, some football boots, couple. Um, so we decided to do that and go there and see. And then when, when we were there, we, we, we realized that, okay, kids are playing barefooted and they don't have clothes to like play in and proper equipment for, for football. So uh, 
I talk, I talk a lot with my teammates when I went back and, and we discuss the possibilities of them giving me all their boots and then I'll take them back. So that's, that was how it started and then of course um, when we went back we realized there was more problem but through football we could do a lot and that was uh, the gender rights, the health and the education. So those areas uh, we're covering now through football and, and we've donated uh, incubators to, to, the, to the children of the, of the hospital to, to, you know, when a kid is not born right, you put them in the incubator. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are two things, two incubators we donated. We donate computers to the school. Uh, we donate books, pencils uh, to also schools and we also do a lot for the girls because the girls don't go to school because of, you know, the, 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 the period. Uh, so we, we, uh, we talk to a lot of uh, companies who, who make the reusable pads and we've donated those to, to the girls so they'll be able to go to school without uh, any worries. So those are the areas we cover now through football and, and barefoot as a whole is becoming uh, more than football, but football is still the objective. So, and that's what I said before, through football, I hope to give uh, a lot back. We collect them in Australia. Um, we're in a process of getting, hopefully finding a big place where anyone can just send the things there and then they'll be received there. Um, but usually when I was in Australia, we collect them uh, so we do a round where it's like a barefoot to boot round where every club would, uh, would put like a big bin outside and then people would just donate their, their boots or their, their clothes and then we'll collect all of them. At the moment I'm still trying to, I, don't, I didn't want to come here and then straight away say, you know, everyone should uh, give me your boots or your, your, your kids to every club. No, I don't want to do that. I want to make a name for myself. After I make a name for myself and, and, and people start to know who I am, I can slowly start to, to tell people what I do outside of football and then if they're interested, they can, they can of course be part of it and I would love for them to be part of it. So uh, that's, that was my way of approaching it. Oh, I, I, I have an open mind about it. I want, I, of course, I want to expand you know, to, to different places, to, to to, to promote the name and, and the, the, the foundation. But it's first, you have to, it's a strategy. Um, so yeah, like I said, it's about working the way up and then slowly doing things because you don't want to just hit people in the face and say, give me this, give me that, you know? And then people will be like, we don't know who you are, what, you know, things like that. So I, I, I'm a person who respect people's boundaries and, and if, if they like who I am after I make a name for myself and they know what I stand for and they want to help, I welcome them. But if they don't, it's okay. It's, it's no problem. I think it's quite, uh, I don't know if cruel is the word, but uh, it's, quite, uh, it's quite sad because, you know, what you have to do is put yourself in the shoe of a refugee. You know, because a refugee, no one wants to leave their home, right? Everyone wants to stay in their home, but they are forced out of their home because of war. And of course, if you have family, you have children, you have uh, kids, you have, you know, put yourself in those situations and think, what would you do, you know, if, if there was war in your country? Of course, you want to look for, for a place to, to, to make sure your kids are safe. If you're a parent, you know, and if you're a kid, you, want, you don't want to see your your dad or your mom get shot or get, get killed, you know. And that's, that's what's happening in these refugees countries. It's, it's nothing out of their control. Uh, they cannot control what's happening. They just want the best for their families. And, and you know, I think the world is, it should be free to everybody because no one wants to leave their home, but everyone should be free to be able to, to explore. And that's how, when you have different people, that's how you learn. As a, as a human, but I guess a lot of people don't see that and they, uh, they lock their mind in and think that, okay, leave them there, we are comfortable here, we should not allow them in because they will cause trouble, but I think there's many benefits in having refugees because you get more people to work, 
more more people to support your country, you know, things like that. So I'm a person that like to welcome everybody, you know. If you're a Portuguese and you want to come to Sudan, you come to Sudan. I'll learn about your culture. You cook different food than me, so I'll eat different food, you know. Things like this, There's, that's what you can get from uh, these uh, so-called refugees, but they are just people like us who who want the best for their families. And I hope one day the world can <laughs> can accept that everyone is the same and and that sharing love is the only way that the world is going to be better for all. Hey, I still have cousins there living there in the same area of near my house with like neighbors and there's a lot of people there that it was uh, it was very emotional for me it was very emotional like I just break down it's like I've been back there f maybe f four times in the last uh, three years four or five times in the last three years uh, and every time I go there I cry that's I'm a person I don't really cry that much because I, I like to keep to myself but when I see things like that, it just breaks me, you know, and, and just to see people that uh, I've grown up with are still living there since we were kids. They're still living, now they're big adults, uh, and they're still living there, and God knows where, how long they'll live there, so that, that breaks me every time I go there, so it's, it's really tough to, to, to go back, and I know Going back is the way to help in some ways, um, but sometimes you have to face. Yeah, you know, it, it keeps me humble when I go back. So. Yeah, I, I I really think so. I think so. Uh, sport in general, and of course, football is really really popular down there, and it represents a lot more than just football. It's it's a way of because uh, there's different nationalities in the camp. So it's a way of them speaking together is, is through sport because you can, uh, through sports you can express your personality. You know, the way you like to play, people can sometimes judge you on that and that's how you like to express yourself. You know, if you're a dribbler, you express yourself through dribbling. If you like to score a goal, you do that, you know, and that's how these people talk uh, even when they don't have the same language. So I think, uh, for, for them, they need an opportunity and for anyone that, I don't think a lot of people know about Kakuma, but they will know one day uh, that there's many talent there and that um, the only way is to give them opportunities. It's not just football, you have many talents in other sports, basketball, you have very tall guys who, who if you give an opportunity to play basketball, you could teach them to be great, you know. So. This is, is a way for Kakuma to, to come up, it's through sports uh, and because it has many talents, it has many runners, it has many, anything you could imagine is there in the camp, you know, so it's about, there's also filmmakers who need an opportunity, you know, and they have ideas, so things like this are the way forward for them and that will be the way of them getting out of the situation they're in and and getting a life that they imagine um, and it's only an opportunity that they need so anyone that's willing to give that opportunity uh, I hope that's me one day I will uh, I'll build a big uh, facility there hopefully for different not just sport but different uh, different kind of things you know you could do hard work you know, football academies, you know, people who like to read, things like that. That's what I want to do in one big uh, facility. That's my dream, yeah, to, and to give them opportunity. And then for people in the Western world or in the, in the developed side of the world to, to go there and see for their eyes, and they will be amazed. I can guarantee them that, you know, what they will see is something that you will not see elsewhere.